Have you watched a tech review video and left wondering what all the numbers, letters that the creator mentioned on that video mean? Do you know what RAM means? Do you know what CPU, GPU speeds mean? Do you know what refresh rate and different displays and camera sensors and all those stuff actually mean? If you don't, then great. This video might be just for you. Hi, I'm Luigi and welcome back to another video. This is part one of a five part video series of where I get to teach you and learn myself as well about how to understand tech reviews better. I'm gonna be breaking down the five main components of what makes a good smartphone and how we can understand tech reviews a little bit better. Let's start with RAM, more specifically RAM for your smartphone. So let's go over the basics first. What does RAM mean? RAM stands for Random Access Memory and it's pretty much present in almost every gadget possible that you can imagine. RAM is volatile, which means it constantly writes and erases data of your phone or of your laptop constantly. RAM allows you to open any task, any tabs, any apps, games, and many of the different tasks, and also allows you to multitask. Usually the more RAM a device or your phone has, the better it is at multitasking, or the better it is at performing certain applications or games that are heavier in graphics that may need more RAM. The one that we found on our phones is slightly different because again, it's gonna be a lot smaller than the RAM that you might find on your PC or on your laptop. This one's called LPDDR, which stands for Low Power Double Data Rate. It's gonna go slightly deeper on the definition of LPDDR. The LP, which stands for low power, is basically that. So it doesn't use as much power as the RAM that you might see on your PC or laptop, because obviously we wanna be able to perform the task that you might do on your laptop or on your phone without taking too much power out of your phone battery. DDR stands for Double Data Rate, which means data is transferred at the rising and falling edge of a clock, and which means it's the speed of the clock to transfer data, which also means that it's the speed of the RAM on your phone be able to produce any task or any actions that you might want. So the faster the clock speed is on a RAM, usually the faster your phone can perform a certain task. So when you go on the specification sheet or on the specs of your phone and you'll see the type of RAM it has, you will usually find LP, DDR, and then a number. Usually the higher the number, or if it has a number and then a letter, means that it's a lot better. Currently we're on LP, DDR 5X. So that's the latest RAM, the fastest RAM there is on smartphones. So if your phone has that, then you have the fastest RAM on your phone but it goes all the way down from LPDDR and then we're up to now LPDDR5X. So let's have a quick look into how they've progressed over the years and kind of what are the features that it has given us over the last few years because so much, these are some features that I didn't know it came from RAM and it's actually quite mind-blowing. So LPDDR1 was a an adoption from another type of RAM that came from laptops and computers and make it more suitable for smartphones to be able to fit in the smaller devices like we have right now. The frequency speeds on the first generation LPDDR were only a mere 200 megahertz, which is absolutely insane knowing the amount of speeds that we have. But we also needed 1.8 volts of power to be able to work properly. That's a lot of power compared to what we have right now. A lot of devices in early 2010 had LPDDR first generation, like the original iPad, iPhone 3GS as well, and the Moto Droid X, like many other phones or devices in the early 2010s. After the first generation of LPDDR, the RAMs will get smaller in size, faster in frequency speeds and data transfer as well, as well as using much less power. It will give us features like video playbacks and much higher resolutions, 4K recording, and nowadays it's giving us things like nighttime photography and AI enhancement on our pictures as well. I'm gonna quickly read out some of the improvements each generation made and how it impacted the whole smartphone industry. LPDDR2 allowed non-volatile memory, which means that you can have apps running in the background and you didn't have to close them completely. So you can have Instagram opened up and then be able to having the background running and then going to Google if you wanted to. So LPDDR2 allowed that to happen for the first time 
and which obviously now it's something that a lot of people have tens to twenties of apps open in the background of the smartphone, which I think is just insane that that happens. But not only that, it also brought the power consumption down from 1.8 volts all the way down to 1.2 which again, it's doing more than the first generation all while using less power. LPDDR3 had the same architecture and layout as LPDDR2, but it had more bandwidth, it was faster in frequencies, but it also gave us features like video playback and content streaming up to 1080p on the bigger and higher resolution smartphones. Then we have LPDDR4 and 4X. LPDDR4 gave us slow motion video, face recognition, 4K recorded and low latency video playback. But then came LPDDR4X which gave us the exact same features but data transfer rates were much faster and it used less power. LPDDR4 used 1.1 volts while LPDDR4X only used 0.6 volt, which again is a big difference because you can still use the same features with much less power, which means a longer battery life on your smartphone. Then we have LPDDR5, which doubled the rate from LPDDR4X, but also developed a multi-clocking architecture to be able to lower RAM depending on the task at hand. So it'll be able to lower frequencies and speeds depending on what you're using it for. For example, if you were playing a game, then we'll ramp RAM up to be able to run that game smoothly, especially with more higher graphics games now on LPDDR5. And then if you're only using just social media or you're only watching a YouTube video, then it will lower the RAM consumption and it will, wouldn't need as much frequency or data transfer as the higher graphic games. So then that came on LPDDR5, all while being smaller in size and needing much less power. LPDDR5 needed 0.9 volts for the higher frequency task like playing higher graphics games or maybe really heavy multitasking, but it could go as slow as 0.3 volts for your everyday task or for those tasks that don't need anywhere near enough RAM. Then we have the latest generation RAM, which is the LPDDR5. 5X, which you'll probably start seeing in a lot of flagship phones coming out right now, and probably some of the ones that have come out over the last few months. An impressive thing about 5X is that it's 33% faster than 5, it requires much less power, and only needs 0.5 volts on the higher frequencies and 0.3 volts on lower frequencies. All of this be able to just be faster than 5, use less power, and again, it's giving us more features. And since the very first generation of LPDDR all the way to LPDDR5X, it's incredible how much technology has progressed. The RAMs have gotten smaller and smaller within our phones and giving us way more features than we could even comprehend 13 years ago, all while using less power, being a hell of a lot faster and just giving us speeds that back in the day were pro level speeds that you will never find and it will be far too expensive to find 13 years ago in any consumer laptop or PC. We will see this progression carried on on years to years because obviously as phones are just gonna get faster, they're gonna get more complex, which means the RAMs has to follow on that. I'm sure the next one, which going by the names and the traditions, it will be LPDDR6 unless it changes. Uh, so it's gone LPDDR4, 4X, 5, 5X. So I'm guessing the next one will be 6. So I'm guessing it'll be the same size as 5X, but it'll be faster, it will need less power, and it will give us some weird features that we couldn't even comprehend now. So that's kind of something that is exciting to see and it's something that I've learned a lot when I was doing research for this video because I really didn't know how RAM really works within our phones because I've always seen the LPDDR and I really didn't understand what the kind of like entails compared to the RAM on our laptops on our PCs as well. If you want to go into more in depth of RAMs and LPDDRs and kind of like go into more of the scientific and all the numbers, and kind of like more of the explanation of in-depth is because I kind of really just scraping the layer, the top layer of LPDDR within our smartphones. I'm gonna drop the link on the description below because I reference this article a lot to do my research. I'm not very comfortable with these topics, 
So it's more of a way for me to learn more about my devices and how they kind of work and how we can use them for perform better tasks or how we can understand our devices better and also hopefully teach you something and I hope you learn something. I do know my devices, I do know what I want from my devices, but I want to understand them more from the inside out because obviously all, all we see is the screen, all we see is how fast the operating system is, how good the cameras are, but I want to understand it how they are actually made and what each component within the smartphone makes it an actual smartphone. So stay tuned for more videos. So this is part one, again, of a five part video series uh, and they'll be dropping them every Tuesday. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something new on this video. Leave in the comments below what you learned or what would you like me to make a video about. But yeah, stay tuned for the next couple of Tuesdays because I'll be dropping this every week. And yeah, thank you for subscribing. I'll see you guys in the very next video.